For this review, I'll be taking a look at the new Phoenix PD36R Pro. It's an update on the previous light and includes a number of substantial increases in runtime, output, and overall usefulness. This light may look and sound familiar though because I took a look at the Phoenix TK20R V2 here earlier this year and the lights share a lot of similarities. Thanks to Phoenix for sending this light to me to look at and review. Links to the light will be down in the description and any sales or anything like that that I've got for it. And while you're down there, make sure to visit my social media channels and check out what I'm doing. The light I have here is an early production sample that was sent for many months ago before the packaging was finalized. That said, I expect a typical Phoenix full retail package here. It's designed to hang on your local store's walls. The only thing that I got my, with mine was this uh, USB-A to USB-C charging cable here which is Phoenix branded and inside is a 21700 Phoenix branded battery as well. Other things that will include are a nylon holster, the pocket clip, a lanyard, spare o-ring, user manual, and warranty card. There are a few accessories here that are not included but are compatible with this light and those would include a pressure mounted switch that replaces the tail cap, uh, different rail mounts for firearms, and a diffuser cone. All these are sold separately. So let's take a look at construction and design. I'm only going to hit the high points here and let the photos and video here hopefully do the rest of the talking. Light shares a lot of the similar design characteristics here with the TK20 Art V2 that I reviewed earlier in the year. As you can see here, very similar design language. The light is made from T6061 aluminum and nicely hard anodized in black here. At the tail cap, you do have your two buttons. This is your mode button and this is your on and off. Anytime you can hold your mode button when the light's off to get to strobe instantly. The button itself is mechanical and has a nice click to it. And as a result of those two, the light does not tail stand since that button is proud. You've got your lanyard attachment point here on the tail cap as well. The tail cap is removable without an issue. Threads are square cut, nicely greased. And while I've got it out, here is the battery. Like I said, it is a Phoenix, it is protected, it is button top, but it is not proprietary, which is nice. It is rated at uh, 5,000 milliamp hour and I tested it at 4890, which is great. The pocket clip here only mounts on the rear of the light. It's nice to see they include this. It's not perfectly straight, but pretty decent. On the back here is your charging port. I'll talk more about this later, but it is incredibly well fit and actually is a little bit difficult to remove. There is the port, USB-C port itself here. The port is waterproof itself, so even if the cover was come off or not in securely and the light was to get submerged, it shouldn't be an issue. And then you do have your LED indicator there for charge status. The head is glued to the body here, so they do not come apart. The front bezel here is also glued in place. I can't unscrew it. You've got light crenulations here. You've got a glass lens, smooth reflector with the LED down there in the center. So let's talk about retention here. Since this is pre-production, I don't have the lanyard or holster that the light will ship with in its final form. What I can talk about here is the pocket clip and it only attaches at the rear, like I said. It's not really deep carry, but not terrible. And for a light of this size, I'm probably not gonna carry it in my front pocket. It's just too big for that, but it worked fine in a jacket or something like that. Your lanyard attachment point is back at the tail cap. In my medium hand, the light does fit pretty well here. Everything works well. I can cigar grip it to hit the uh, button here, no problems. Good, good sized light, easy to grip. The Phoenix PD36R Pro is using the Luminous SFT70 LED in cool white. My Opal meter shows it at 5456 Kelvin with a CRI of 60 in medium mode. In higher modes, it cools off slightly and it has a slight green tinge to it in my eye and on the meter, as you can see here. The beam has a large pronounced hotspot in the center with a large amount of spill. There is a little bit of tint shift as well. Compared to the Phoenix TK20 RV2, the hotspots are similar in size, but the spill is larger here on the PD36R Pro. Parasitic drain was measured at a low 4 microamps with the tail cap off. And there is a little bit of PWM here, especially on the lower modes, but to my eye or camera, I didn't see it. Only my Opal meter did. So I won't go into this terribly detailed, but the uh, I'll put up a chart here or you can read the written review to see it more. I measured the outputs here with my lumen tube versus the stated outputs in the manual. All readings were taken at 30 second mark and the light was cooled in cold water before each uh, measurement here. So heat buildup of heat wasn't an issue. Eco measured at 35 lumens. It was 116% of the claimed output. Low measured 157 lumens. It was 104% of the claimed output. Medium mode measured 349 lumens. It was 99.7% of the claimed output. 
high measured 978 lumens, 97.8% of the claimed output, and turbo measured 2160 lumens, which is 77.14% of the claimed output. One little note on that, that is at that 30 second mark. Phoenix is claiming 2800 lumens here, and it does hit 2800 lumens at the very beginning. It just can't sustain it at the 30 second mark. That's not real uncommon for a lot of flashlights, so I, I don't give it a dig. It's just how things are marketed. Here are the night shots for the Phoenix PD36R Pro. This is running a luminous SFT70 LED, about 5500 Kelvin, but a rather low 60 CRI. I have it here on eco mode, which is around 30 lumens, and you can see this throws relatively well. It throws out to my fence there, which is 50 feet or so, but doesn't go a whole lot further than that. Bumping up here is low, 150 lumens, and it's going a little bit further, but not a ton. Medium, 350 lumens, and we can just start to get to the neighbor's fence and to the eye this goes a little bit further than what the uh, camera is showing but not terribly far and that's about 150 feet here is high a thousand lumens and it's making it across the street easily to those trees those are 300 feet or so and here is turbo 2800 lumens and that's illuminating the building there which you can see 500 feet and this is fairly cool white um, the camera maybe is a little bit bluer than what it actually is. We can see the beam, though, is the hot spot is fairly large, not real focused, and there's quite a bit of spill here. If I long press, I get a very fast strobe that goes then slows down and speeds up. Here's the TK20R V2, a light I reviewed earlier this year. It's got the same LED, very similar output, 3000 lumens instead of 2800, and we can see it has very similar performance. Compared to the two here, it's really hard to tell. I'd say the uh, TK20R maybe has a slightly larger hotspot and maybe throws just a hair further, but they're very, very comparable if I put them side by side here. So there's the uh, TK20R. And here's the light that I'm reviewing tonight. For heat and runtime, I tested with the supplied Phoenix 5000 milliamp hour battery here on my Texas Ace Lumen tube. It's turbo here started out at the claimed lumen output, but by one minute it was stepped down to about 750 lumens because heat was building up to about 43C. It increased the output some in the next 20 minutes here as heat dissipates, but the light has a substantial drop at two hours and 10 minutes, and then again at three hours and 20 minutes, and once more at four hours and 30 minutes where the light runs at its lowest output for many more hours. Total runtime was right around eight hours and the light does flash a little bit in the last hour used to indicate the battery is low. I then did a comparison here between turbo high and medium runtimes and there isn't really any real surprises here. Lower outputs are more stable, have longer outputs, and run cooler. So the UI here is very easy to use. It's the same that was found on the Phoenix TK20R V2. The light has two buttons as I mentioned before. You've got on and then your mode button. You can press the mode button when the light is off and you'll get strobe instantly. Turn it on, the light does have memory, so it shows the last mode that was used. I think that was turbo. So here is low. I just press it again to go to up the ramp here each time. That button here is a forward quick clicky switch, as I heard before. You can half press on that button as well to get the light to turn on without turning it on fully. When the light is on, you can press and hold and it will go to strobe as well. Overall, very easy user interface here to look at. Recharging on the PDX36 Pro is accomplished via USB-C here on the side near the head. The port is worth mentioning here. It's a really good port cover and you can see I did put the light in some water recently so it's a little bit wet. Not an issue because that USB-C port is sealed and waterproof itself. This is one of the better cover designs I've experienced. It stays in place really well. It's actually kind of hard to get out sometimes and it's out of the way. You're not going to catch it or snag it on anything. Arguably, it might even be a little bit too hard to open. I was able to charge the light via USB-C to C or PD chargers without a problem here. And one thing to note is you cannot use the light while charging. I charged the included 5000 milliamp hour battery from low voltage protection at 3.044 volts to full at 4.227 volts in 4 hours 13 minutes. Charging starts off here slow for the first few minutes, then increases significantly with a peak of 2.5 amps before slowly declining. 
Total charge time was four hours, 10 minutes. And one thing that was slightly concerning here was the terminal voltage was slightly too high at 4.227 volts. Not really sure if this is my multimeter. I don't think it is. Or maybe due to the fact that this is a prototype light. When fully charged, the LED side indicator here will go from red to blue. So some final thoughts on the Phoenix PD36R Pro. It's a pretty large upgrade over the older PD36R in nearly all the metrics. And it's overall a well-rounded flashlight. However, I can't help to draw on the large number of similarities between the TK20R V2 that I reviewed earlier this year. Same LED, same UI, same battery, very similar performance, um, same tail cap and clip. Whether they differ is the charging port cover and head size. The TK20 RV2 is more of a tactical purpose, Phoenix says, while the PD36R Pro is more EDC general use. Yet the PD36 Pro also has weapon light mounts that are compatible with both. So they kind of are the same thing. So I'd say if you have a TK20R V2, you probably don't need a PD36R Pro unless it's just a little bit too big for you. But as we all know, we're all flashlight collectors and flashaholics, so another flashlight isn't a bad thing. Overall, this is a well-built light. It's one of the best USB-C port covers that I've seen, and very easy UI, two dedicated buttons on the tail. I'll give it a ding for not being able to tail stand and for not and for lacking a true moonlight mode of one lumen or less. But other than that, and being cool white, I can't really fault it. Let me know in the comments if you've got the PD36R Pro, what you think of it, if it's something you're going to add to your Christmas list or not. And as always, I appreciate your comments, likes, subscribes, and I will catch you on the next review soon. Thanks for watching.